Say, Lord, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. And say, Lord, deliver me from evil. Deliver me from evil. Deliver me from all evil. There was a reason why. There was a reason why God was working through his son's body and telling the disciples to pray like this for a reason because being delivered from all evil is also dealing with evil within yourself, is dealing with the evil within others, is dealing with all evil. So it's important when you pray that you target Remaining pure and also tapping into new purity with God. When you pray, you have to pray for new purity. Because remember, bless out a pure in heart for they shall see God. Now, the kingdom of heaven, it was made by God so that he could share fun times with you. So that you can have fun. So that you can have funds. So that you can have finances and provisions. So there is a wealth mantle that God hides in his kingdom of heaven. Because he wants to make you wealthy. He wants to give you abundance. So there's a wealthy anointing that everybody has reserved by the Holy Spirit for them to take a hold of. There's a wealthy anointing. When somebody receives this anointing. The Holy Spirit is releasing power through them, out of them, around them, so that they can keep on enlarging, so they can keep on expanding. Expansion is a dimension of God responding to your efforts to please him. Now, you know, some people, they, they say that they seek out to please God, but then they become wicked. Because you can't please God by creating your own standards. You can't start handing out pamphlets and say, well, I want to please God. That's why I'm doing this. Pleasing God doesn't create wayward activity. Wayward behavior. You know? So sometimes people be like, you know, I want to please God. That's why I'm doing this. No, they're not doing it because they want to please God. They want to please themselves. Because if you want to please God, you're going to find out what God wants. You're not just going to be doing something because it's in your accessibility or you think that it's right for you. You're going to find out what is what is God looking for from me? What does he want? What does he actually need done? That's the same way. Imagine you going up to Chick-fil-A right now and you go up to the window and they give you an order and you say, I didn't order this. I ordered that. And they say, no, this is what we think you should have. We just want to serve you. And you say, but I don't want that. I want this. No, no, no. We're not giving you that. We want to give you this because this is how we want to serve you. We want to make you happy. We want to please you. So we chose to give you this. So you got to be careful of that, that you don't step into that with the Lord. Imagine doing that with the Lord. You know how stupid that sounds? You telling the Lord, I want, I want to please you. I want to make you happy. And the Lord looking at you like, how, how is that making me happy? I didn't ask for that. The Holy Spirit has a wealth power reserved in his kingdom for the person that is willing to lay down their own life to receive the life that he has for them. There is a lifestyle that you will receive in 2024 if you pursue the Lord with all your heart, if you make that decision. But it's all up to you. Nobody can make that decision for you. Very early in life, I made a decision I wasn't going to let no demon, no unclean spirit, no familiar spirit, no principality hinder me from having what I was supposed to have. I made a long decision. I made a decision a long time ago, rather, concerning that. So what I did was I made a, a choice that I was going to work my altar and sow my way out. I took the seed and I started naming my seed 
according to the knowledge that I had of the word. So when I say that, pray, Lord, I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. When you pray, that prayer is powerful because now you're opening up your soul to the channels of the Holy Ghost for him to turn on different channels of his knowledge to you so that you can know things. Even praying in the spirit is a financial anointing. When somebody start praying in the spirit, they're moving in a strong financial anointing. And it's important that you pray in the Holy Ghost because when you pray in the Holy Spirit, financial mysteries and the chapters of your life in provision start to unfold for you. I spent a long time praying in the Holy Spirit during the time where the Father began to give me the seed message, the gospel of sowing and reaping, the good news, that you could sow and receive sowers into your life. And they'll be anointed by God to sow more into you than what you sowed into God. But you'll activate a level of their investment by your investment. So your sowing is determining how they sow into you. So if you sow in $50, they $50. If you sow in hundreds of dollars, they'll come sow in hundreds of dollars. If you sow in pennies, they sow in quarters and pennies, and they sow in, in the, the change dimension. If you sow in thousands, they come sow in thousands and millions. A person that's given God a lot of money or have given God a lot of money must be conscious of mental backlash. Witchcraft spirits want you to grieve the Holy Ghost that taught you how to sow and how to reap. Witchcraft spirits want you to have desires that are evil. Witchcraft spirits want you to disappoint God. Do you know that the word disappoint come from the word appoint? You know that, right? Let me explain that. So let me, let me show you something. You can't dis be disappointed in anything or anyone that wasn't appointed to something. So when you, and, and you don't have, always have to appoint somebody to something with verbal uh, appointment. You can appoint them to something by your opinion. So let me show you something. If you believe that somebody will never smoke a cigarette, you have appointed them to never smoke, a non-smoker. So if you see them smoking, you get disappointed because what you appointed them to be in your mind, they are lower than that. So disappointment means that somebody was given an appointment. They was appointed. And in their uh, uh, being appointed, they had an appointment. Appointment mean that they were supposed to meet something. So you get disappointed because they didn't meet it. So now you know what the word disappointed means. So how could somebody get disappointed with God? Because the man walked away sorrowful after the Lord told him to do this, start sowing like this, start giving to, the, to this. Why did he turn away sorrowful? Because he got disappointed because he had already appointed things in his mind about his life that came from the evil one, that came from the old serpent. So as you can see, Satan gives you appointments in your mind. I'm supposed to be married by this time. I'm supposed to have children by, by this age. I'm supposed to own my house by this age. I'm supposed to go back to school now. I'm supposed to get a, a, a degree here. I'm supposed to uh, get this apartment. I'm supposed to... And see, when you're not led by the Spirit, Satan is influencing what you appoint in your mind to happen. So when it don't happen... And Satan know that it is not from God. So Satan on purpose is not going to want it to happen. 
so that you can start getting angry at God like God is a problem when really it's the unrenewed mind. Hallelujah. 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 What a Savior. Hallelujah. What a friend. Lord, I'm amazed. I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. We're singing majesty. We're singing majesty. Forever I am changed by your love in the presence of your majesty. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Forever I am changed by your love in the presence of your majesty. To worship you I live. To worship you I live, I live to worship you. To worship you I live. <laughs> I want to sing that song. I love you, Jesus. But most people that sing that song be the crooks. So it's kind of hard for me to sing that song. I guess I got to renew my mind concerning that, right? <laughs> everybody, everybody that I ever heard sing that song was a crook. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you Lord, I love you more than anything. <laughs> Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. People be singing that song. I love you more than anything. And it'd be a damn lie. It'd be a damn lie. I love you more than anything mean I love you more than anything. It'd be a lie. They sing that song. Beautiful words. And heart still ugly. Living for Jesus pays off real good. That's why you don't really see much people that get rich off of the financial anointing of God. It's hand-picked people because they have gone all the way in. They have locked into the will of God. Um, today, I was uh, playing basketball with grown men. And uh, we was playing this um, intense basketball game. Okay, uh... When we started the basketball game, I, I hit a three-pointer by the grace of God to start off the game. There were some other guys, uh, some was my teammates and some was on the other team. The ones that was on the other team, they, they shot shots. Now, they, these are grown men now. They grow men. They're, according to physical age, 
their old uh well some was older and some was slightly uh, uh, you know 30 20s right so when one missed the shot he was embarrassed all right so i told him i said that's okay He took another shot later on, and it was even worse than that shot that he took. I told him, that's okay. Just keep shooting. You, 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 you got it, right? Meanwhile, this is the first time this person ever encountered me, right? Now he's on the other team. Okay, long story short, I caught him staring at me to the degree he wasn't even focused on his teammates passing him the ball or anything. I watched the guy go from making so much mistakes. He started shooting and making his shots. And I told him, see, you got it, right? Then he started driving to the basket on a bigger guy that was bigger than him. And he was faking him out. It's like, like he turned into an all-star all of a sudden. And all this grown man needed was grace, which is added on ability. I had a teammate, a black tall guy, and the black tall guy, when he got, he started making a lot of bad decisions, right? So he started apologizing to me. I said, no, no, no. I said, don't apologize to me. I say, you got this. I said, uh, I say, I'm going I'm 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 to get the ball to you, so always watch for me, right? So I had the attention on me, so I drove to the basket on purpose to trick them out. They thought I was going to take the shot. I passed it over to him. He went go catch the ball and lost it. It went out of bounds. He was like, man, dang it, man, I'm, I'm messing up. And I told him, no, no, no. I said, you good. I said, look out for me because I'm coming to you. Just be always ready. So I took a couple three-pointers. I missed a couple of the three-pointers. He got the rebound, got it to me. I made a three-pointer. On next play, he get the ball. He goes throw it to me. Throws a bad pass. The ball goes out of bounds. He apologized. I said, no. I said, you got this. We're going to do it next time. But look out for me. I'm going to look out for you. Just stay focused. He took a couple shots. I got him open a couple times, and he missed the shot. He hesitated. He wanted to pass it back to me or the other teammates, right? I told him, you take it. He missed the shot bad. Everybody started clowning him, laughing at him, and mocking him, even our own teammates. And I put, I say, I say, no, 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 no. I say, let's not do that. Let's not do that. And I pulled him. I said, you're going to start making your shots. I'm not going to stop passing it to you either. So as the game goes on, we're losing. It's 13, we got six. We're going to 15. I told him to play defense on somebody. He listened to me. He got, and he was doing great. All right? So I made a three-point. We counted by twos. I get to eight. It's 13-8. For the next couple passes, he thought that I was going to shoot, and everybody thought I was going to shoot. I made sure I passed it to him. He started making the shots. We started off with a layup. Then I had him do like a mid-range. Mid-range means like you're not at the three-point line. You're like, you're near like the free throw and stuff like that, you know, the free throw range, right? Mid-range, meaning you're not at the three-point line. You're in the middle, like 
mid-range, I mean middle range. He started making, he made that shot. So now we going up in numbers. We come back and it's time for the game winning shot. Their whole team scattered to guard me because I'm at the three-point line and I can easily hit this and we can go up by one to win. When the crowd drew to me, I threw it to him and he made the game winning shot. I want you to see what I'm saying here. What the Holy Ghost does is the Holy Ghost watches you Keep on making the wrong decision. And you know that he's patient because you're still alive. Even though you be doing a lot of. You know. Nonsense. Right. What he does is keep on passing you the ball. And he'll set you up. He'll pitch you in a place where you're open to his word, his instruction, his wisdom. And he makes it easy for you to score in life. Even when you don't even got the confidence you can score. And as he keeps on talking to you, he don't stop talking to you when you're doing wrong. Because you actually need the grace of what he's saying. And as he keeps on giving you his word, he's giving you the ball to score. And whether or not you score reveals how you listened to the word. If you don't score, if you keep on fumbling, if you keep on throwing the ball out of bounds, if you keep on making errors and mistakes, if you keep on missing shots, you know that you're not really taking in the grace that's being spoken to you by the word. I watch with my own eyes. And here's the funny thing. The teammates of the other guys, the other guy that was, they was he was making a lot of bad shots. But I encouraged him while he was, wasn't on my team. They watched him go from mistake, mistake, mistake to scoring, scoring, doing moves, doing all type of tricks and stuff. But this guy, he's looking at me with amusement because in his mind, he feels ideas and energy to do stuff with a basketball that he really couldn't do. And I didn't lay hands on him. I didn't tell him I'm a prophet. I didn't tell him I'm an apostle. I didn't tell him I'm a pastor. I didn't tell him I'm a teacher. I didn't tell him I'm an evangelist. I didn't tell him I can heal the sick. I can raise the dead. I can prophesy. I can see in the spirit. I am a friend of the Father in heaven. That's my father. I didn't say that. But he is in the glory of my words. And even though we are on different teams, I'm able to impart to him something that he didn't even see himself having. Whenever the Holy Spirit is teaching you through your man of God's body, he's giving you a grace, an added on ability to do things that you yourself have eat, not even see yourself did. That's what deliverance is. You didn't function outside of this habit. But when grace comes, when the added on ability comes, you are now escaping the habit and it has no power over you. So what really is the grace of God in finances? Okay, you've never been a millionaire. 
but the grace is a millionaire operation. So you never function as a millionaire, but the grace is millionaire making moves. And so the manifestation of millions find you not because you're eager for it or you're anxious for it, because the Bible tells you in Proverbs, labor not to be rich. And why does the word tell you to labor not to be rich? Because when you get anxious, when you want it so bad, oh, I'm going to do, I'm going to scheme, I'm going to make it happen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play lottery, I'm going to make something happen. When you so hungry to be rich, The spirit of mammon can come in. And this is where Satan becomes your financial counselor. That's why the Bible says you can't serve God and mammon. Because to serve God, he's going to have you so. If you serve mammon, mammon going to teach you not to sow. You're not hearing me in here. This is big, man. Mammon, mammon going to have you not so. So you can't serve God and man. And it's, it's funny how Satan tried to wrongly divide this word for so many years. You can't serve God and, and money. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't stop. Do, do you even understand? This is Jesus, the son of God. Saying that you can't serve God and mammon. And this same Jesus gives a parable about how there is a businessman and he gives one one talent one five talent one two talent and he goes away and he sees what he what they're going to do with it whether they're going to sow or whether they're going to eat the seed what they're going to do with the lord's money this is the same son of god that talked about the finances being given and people being tried on what they're going to do with the finances. This is the same son of God. So what does it mean you can't serve God and mammon? So the man that hid the one talent had the spirit of mammon. The spirit of mammon was Satan telling him, don't sow the seed. Put your trust in this money. Put your trust in this finances. Don't sow it. Don't honor God. You know how to make yourself rich. You know how to take care of yourself. You know how to give yourself abundance. You know how to keep yourself well off. Don't sow. If you sow, then you ain't going to have nothing. So the spirit of mammon is a non-sowing teaching curriculum of Satan. The spirit of mammon is where Satan teaches you not to sow, not to honor God, not to trust God. Don't make no sacrifice. Don't work no job. Don't honor the Lord with your substance. The spirit of mammon is in control of all these devices to hinder you from working your altar. From sowing and reaping. 